Are eggs bad for you again? Hmm, well, there's a new meta-analysis that just came out that people are talking about updating this whole idea of eating eggs. It's killing us earlier with specifically cardiovascular disease. And what are my thoughts? You know, I am a lipidologist by trade. I'm an obesity specialist and lipidology uh, specialist as well, specializing in lipids, cholesterol, triglycerides, that type of thing, and metabolism. So what do I think about this? Again, if you go back to uh, the diet soda study that I talked about with cancer, kind of the same type of thing. They did a prospective analysis of this, uh, of this cohort group, and then they tried to look at how many eggs they were eating and relate it to the risk of incident cardiovascular disease. And I'm gonna tell you, I don't really, I mean, this is interesting. Again, there's lots of people arguing about this. Some people are saying nutritional epidemiology is worthless. I don't think so. I think, you know, I'm not a nutritional epidemiologist. I have very expert friends that get into it and understand it. Uh, again, a lot of people are arguing over this. I'm gonna give you some simple advice here. Now it does show that increasing egg consumption, likely from increasing dietary cholesterol consumption, increases risk of cardiovascular disease. And I think the more practical takeaway here is not to be afraid of eggs, but to understand your risk of cardiovascular disease and lipid metabolism and the things that you eat that affect your serum lipids, the lipids that are circulating your blood. So real quick, there are some people that don't think that dietary cholesterol makes any difference in your serum cholesterol, meaning the cholesterol that you eat goes down. Somehow, I'll show you a little figure here of how it gets into, actually, why don't I just show you right now. You eat some dietary cholesterol, boom, comes in your diet, but we also have cholesterol that comes from bile, comes from our liver, comes down, in, down through the bile duct, we eat dietary cholesterol, obviously gets into our guts, and it crosses the intestinal border here. It tries to go through this NPC1 like one, uh, Neiman Pick C1 like one uh, protein here. Now, you don't need to memorize this. For the love of God, please don't, because I have to, to take my tests and understand how some of these drugs work, like Zetamibe blocks this. But you can see here that, hey, diet. Diet sources of cholesterol probably contribute. How much? It's around 20, maybe 30% compared to the bile, which is more like 70 to 80% of the cholesterol actually in our guts. So, uh, yes, is there data to support this? We've had many, many years of studies. I wasn't involved in these. These were way before I was even born, looking at uh, dietary cholesterol and changes in our serum lipid. Now, it's not as much as saturated fat and probably not as much as fiber, um, but I did want to show this, how it does happen through this uh, NPC one like one, Neiman Pixie one like one, how it gets crossed over there, gets put into these chylomicrons. Those go circulate, go to our liver. These things can change how our LDL uh, recycling is, the, basically the cholesterol recycling in our blood. And then I just wanted to show you real quick Here's a, a more recent meta regression analysis um, that probably overall, yes, you can see down here that overall there, there's probably a change in our LDL cholesterol from having dietary cholesterol. It's not much though. Um, I wanted to point this out because like, yeah, prob there's probably an effect with eggs uh, with some people. Not everybody necessarily to a point, and I wanna show you here real quick, going back to that NPC one like one, here's, kinda, here's some genetic markers of, um, of lipid metabolism and how they relate to reduction in the ApoB, the little protein that carries the uh, cholesterol in our blood, and how it relates to heart disease. And you can see that there's, there's an effect here with this NPC one like one. So there's probably an effect from dietary cholesterol a little bit, and we know that Having increased, uh, here's a, like a little little graphic here of showing from a recent review, showing how increased cholesterol or ApoB containing lipoproteins, those are the proteins that carry the cholesterol, how they, they're circulating in our blood, they go through our little endothelium, the lining of our arteries, 
They can get caught in this uh, proteoglycan, get aggregated, stick together, get modified, boom, our immune system gets uh, activated, little monocytes turn into macrophages, start gobbling it up, and start making plaque. That's the idea. And over long periods of time, I wanted to show you this real quick. The longer we have, higher and higher, higher levels of even what we'd consider normal uh, LDL cholesterol levels, the total plaque burden, the amount of plaque we're building up is probably related to how much or high, high our LDL is in our system. Now, that's not to say that other factors do not matter, things like smoking, hypertension, other inflammatory markers. If I go back to this little picture here, inflammatory markers can increase the risk of penetration and, and aggregation of these uh, LDL particles. But my whole point here is not necessarily to pick at like a study like this. The point is that I don't necessarily care about these types of studies so much other than like, hey, what does this mean practically? What this means practically is that like, hey, you should probably discuss with your doctor, ideally someone that understands lipids, look at your lipid panel and go, and then look at your diet and go like, hey, are you eating a lot of eggs? And then what you can do, all you have to do is cut out the eggs. You can switch them for egg whites, egg beaters, I don't really care. Switch them out and then just recheck your lipids. If you notice a difference, I would say at least five to 10 milligrams per deciliter um, uh, of, of change in your LDL cholesterol and total cholesterol, and ideally we would see this in the ApoB if you ever check that. Non-HDL cholesterol is another one too. I like to check ApoB with all these things and, and, and monitor, but if you notice a difference when you switch out the eggs for uh, non-cholesterol containing egg products such as egg beaters or egg whites, maybe you go, is it worth it to cut out the eggs just to have a, a, a lower uh, LDL uh, cholesterol ApoB over the course of time, as I said, over the course of time, the higher and higher it is, area under the curve, the, the more time you have higher cholesterol, the more risk you have cardiovascular disease. Same thing with high blood pressure, smoking, uh, insulin resistance, that type of thing. I'm not saying those things don't matter. I know there's a lot of people out there saying, oh, cholesterol doesn't matter. No, it, it does. It absolutely, the LDL cholesterol increases our risk of cardiovascular disease, and so do those other things. So if you feel like you know, your lipids change significantly. Again, you're gonna to have to talk to your own doctor to see if it's significant. I would say anywhere in that five to 10 milligrams per deciliter range for your LDL cholesterol, non-HDL cholesterol, and, and, and the ApoB. If you see that big of a change, maybe it's reasonable to cut it out. I would say other things to focus on, saturated fat, switching saturated fats such as butter, types of uh, butter, coconut oil, those, yeah. Meat has a little bit in it, but butter and coconut oil, I see people, these biohackers, are throwing it into their coffee and all sorts of stuff. These people are, are, these people are not to be trusted. If they're doing that, they think they're going to improve your cardiovascular health. They literally have no idea what they're talking about. So swapping those things out for uh, monounsaturated and polyunsaturated fats, avocados, avocado oil, olive oil, uh, that type of thing, nuts and seeds and fish. That's what I would do first. People that uh, my patients notice huge changes. It looks like they took a statin. Statins are the ones that block our production or, or the pathway that creates cholesterol, which then increases our LDL uh, receptors, which increases our recycling, which lowers our LDL in their blood. So it looks like they're taking a statin, but they're not. It's just because they swapped out that uh, saturated fat for mono and polyunsaturated fat. Other things you can do is you can increase your soluble fiber, which then can actually bind. This is kind of interesting. It binds some of that dietary cholesterol, but also remember more of the cholesterol that's in our intestines is from bile. So if it binds some of that, we, we excrete it, we dump it out. We actually have this mechanism, just like I said, the statins, we actually can increase the LDL receptor mediated uptake of the serum cholesterol, the stuff that's circulating in our blood. Our, our liver goes, hey, we need, we need to make more bile. So uh, if you're excreting it out by binding with uh, fiber, um, your LDL receptor uh, recycling increases, which lowers our overall LDL in our serum. 
So it's just another way, again, probably bigger, probably a bigger effect from that soluble fiber than, you know, maybe changing the dietary cholesterol. But it really depends. I know I have a lot of patients who just consume eggs and eggs and eggs. And I'm like, man, their lipid profile is, is amazing. So the dietary effect, uh, it's a little bit different. Again, it probably depends on some of your genetics with this NPC1 uh, like one. And then there's also this bilge pump, this ABC G5. Again, don't memorize this stuff. But there, you see here, if you look here, this, bil this bilge pump, the ABC G5 G8 actually shuttles it out. There are some people that have a broken version of these. So they, and, and also differences in the NPC1 like one. So some people may have bigger changes in their cholesterol serum cholesterol based on these uh, genetic differences. It's kind of interesting stuff. So that's the practical takeaway. In case you see these headlines about the study that came out just recently, you see people bickering about it. Oh, do, are eggs good or bad? Uh, I think there's some good things about eggs. Think about it this way too. What if somebody uh, starts, instead of start eating donuts in the morning, starts eating like eggs, and they lose weight and their inflammatory markers improve and their, maybe their lipids change slightly. Uh, I have a feeling it'd actually be, I, I think their lipids would actually improve by swapping out donuts, but, um, and then they become healthier for that. So think of it like that. Don't think of eggs as bad. Just think it's all relative. That's the practical takeaway. Don't get caught up in the minutia and the headlines of nutrition and all that. So anyway, if you, appreciated this, please send to a friend, subscribe to my channel, and I will talk to you next time.